Senator from Washington is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to uh, talk the about. The Senate is currently in a quorum uh, call. Mr. President, I ask the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. I um, I um, ask the indulgence of my colleague from West Virginia. Uh, I think we were uh, thought the uh, minority leader was coming to the floor to speak, and so we've gotten a little behind here. But I, I appreciate his indulgence uh, for me to make a recognition of a very important Washingtonian. Uh, but before I start, Mr. President, I want to take a moment to say that uh, my thoughts and prayers are with the families and the victims of the horrific uh, bombing that, or attack, I should say, that happened in Libya, and that it is now time to uh, remember all of the men and women who serve our country abroad in these embassies and uh, to thank them for their service and, uh, and uh, hope for their uh, protection. Mr. President, on a chilly day in January of 2009, Americans watched with pride as Barack Obama stood before the nation and took the presidential oath of office. For some, that experience was another milestone in a long journey to ensure that America lives up to the ideas that this country was built for everyone. The election of an African-American president shattered a barrier that many thought would never happen. The American struggle for civil rights has produced many seminal moments. Rosa Parks and the Montgomery bus boycott, Martin Luther King and the March on Washington, Jackie Robinson stepping up to the plate for the first time. But before all of these events, there were the Tuskegee Airmen, and George Hickman, a Washington resident and a Tuskegee Airman, was truly part of America's greatest generation. They were the catalyst for an eventual desegregation of the entire United States military. And on March 19, 1941, the 99th Pursuit Squadron was formed at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. When the United States was waging war against tyranny abroad, the members of what became known as the Tuskegee Airmen fought it and fought around uh, the globe for us. Breaking barriers is never easy, and the time and the competence and patriotism of these African Americans sometime were openly questioned. But the Tuskegee Airmen didn't listen to those critics. They were fighting for what this country could be, not what it was. In the first class of graduates, there was only five. But before the war ended, almost 1,000 pilots went through combat training at Tuskegee. Of those 450 flew planes in the 99th Squadron and the 332nd Fighter Group in missions across Europe. And they used the steely resolve they had shown in the face of racism to their advantage. The 99th conducted bomber escort missions with stunning success. They flew 200 of 205 of these missions without the loss of a single bomber to the enemy aircraft. The 332nd group achieved just as much. The red tail fighters came to be feared in the skies because of the feats like the one of Lieutenant Pearson who pulled off when he took out a German destroyer in the harbor of Trieste, Italy with just a 50 caliber machine gun. Equally important were the Tuskegee pilots who broke barriers at home. They may not have participated in combat, but they proved that they were instrumental in powering American military that eventually won the war. Amidst jeers and insults, the Tuskegee airmen quietly went about their job with grace. Through grit and determination, they barreled through, full of dead ends and blocked doors and shined light for others to follow. President Obama acknowledged as much when he said, quote, my career in public service was made possible by the path that these heroes like Tuskegee Airmen have blazed. These important Tuskegee Airmen were pioneers. And among them was George Hickman from Seattle. Proud 
and smiling as always, as you can see in this photograph. I rise today, Mr. President, to honor the life of this American hero and loyal Washingtonian. George Hickman passed away on August 19th at the age of 88. We owe George Hickman a great deal because beneath that big smile lay a quiet determination and courageous spirit that helped him make America a better place for all. George grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and he loved building model planes, which he bought one for 10 cents at Woolworths, and it became his dream to become a pilot. At 18, he pursued that dream. And when he graduated from high school in 1943, George trained with the Army's All-African-American 99th Pursuit Squadron in Tuskegee, Alabama. He was a Tuskegee Airman and one of our nation's first African-American pilots. George's passion for aviation continued after his service was up, and as a mechanic with a Tuskegee Airman, he developed skills that allowed him to succeed in college and graduate from college. And eventually, George brought his expertise to Boeing when he moved to Seattle in 1955. And over 29 years of his career, he rose through the ranks at Boeing. But that's not where this story ends. George was also an uplifting spirit, an uplifting spirit, and he had the most radiant smile. You can see that from this picture. And that smile was there for his community, his family, and everyone who met him. George became a well-known figure at Seattle sporting events for the University of Washington Huskies and the Seattle Seahawks. In fact, People called him our lucky charm. For more than 40 years, he served as a press attendant and usher at UW sporting events. He never missed a game, including Rose Bowls. And he was there to give moral support to everyone. Even he went to the basketball and volleyball games and gave high fives to everybody on the court. As the UW basketball coach Lorenzo Romar put it, He's a guy that is selfless. He's always trying to lift everyone up. I always wondered, seeing this picture of George many times before today, what was it about the steely reserve of an airman that then becomes so grounded in what is really important in life, sharing and lifting other people up? But that's exactly what George did. And the University of Washington lifted George up, too. They helped collect enough money so that he could travel back here and be part of President Obama's inauguration with those 188 us, other Tuskegee Airmen. Some estimates are that more than half of those Tuskegee Airmen that were there are no longer with us. With George's passing, Certainly there is one more angel in heaven with a very big smile on their face. But here on earth, we have one fewer American heroes from the Tuskegee days to tell their story. So today I encourage all Americans to learn about the story of the Tuskegee Airmen. For those of you in the Pacific Northwest, I encourage you to visit the Museum of Flight in Seattle or the Northwest African American Museum because they both have exhibits on display about this epic story. And it's a great opportunity to reflect on the people who inspired our nation and ended up changing the course of American history. George may no longer be with us, but he will always be remembered for that very big smile and for those that he's touched through his life. His spirit will live on. It's almost as if he's saying in that picture, you can get it done. We can get it done. His legacy lives on in his children, Regina and Sherry and Vincent and Sean Neal, in his grandchildren and in his great-grandchildren. And we will all carry on this legacy with the United States military and the trailblazing Tuskegee Airmen. George's spirit will also carry on back home at Husky Stadium and at Heck Edmonds Pavilion. And Many people, the Seattle City Council and the University and the Seahawks have all honored him 
in their special ways. So, Mr. President, on behalf of a grateful nation, it is my pleasure to introduce a resolution to honor the life of an American hero, a great Washingtonian, George Hickman. And his wife, Doris, summed it up. George loved his family and enjoyed life to the fullest. He was a true American hero and an inspiration for all of us. I hope we pass this resolution. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor.